I'm Alan Cordry with Rambreed Studios, and today we're here with our friend Matthew Waite. Matthew Waite is a comic artist who specializes in doing variant covers for companies like Marvel, DC, Valiant, IDW, Boom Studios. Did I miss anybody? Strangers. Okay. So, yeah. So Matt's done a, a few covers for just about everybody, including Bambreed Studios. So first, thanks for uh, taking some time today. Um, no I know you're working on a lot of covers. Um, so we do appreciate that. And then also um, want to kind of get into some of the stuff you're doing now because you're doing some pretty cool stuff. Uh, let's start out um, back in what, about 2012-ish, you were doing kind of the video game 8-bit covers. Uh, and those got really, really popular. I think the Deadpool 27 was like one of the best-selling covers ever. Um, and now you've kind of evolved that a bit. Do you want to kind of speak to that? Well, in 2012, it actually started out with a kind of a gag gift kind of thing with Valiant. Uh, I was in talks with Valiant on doing something because I've known the guys there for a while. And... I just happened to play around with an 8-bit thing, and I did all the Valiant characters as 8-bit, and I sent it in as a Christmas gift to my buddy Adam, and they said, hey, we really like this, and that that proceeded to do the first six covers of the Valiant 8-bits. So after that, I kind of got known as the 8-bit guy, so we did another series with Valiant, and then I did my first series with uh, Marvel soon after that. Okay. What was the first Marvel cover? Uh, first Marvel cover I actually did was Avenger Arena 14. But that was the second to last one to get released. Hmm. Uh, the first one to get released, I believe, was either the Wolverine 10 or the Superior Spider-Man number one. Okay. So you did a lot of 8-bit covers. Those got blew up really popular. But you've kind of modified that now. So what are you doing now? So I want to say it was about May or June. I went and had lunch with uh, Tim Seeley, and we were talking about his gallery. And I thought it would be a really, really cool concept for one day to have uh, – a gallery show with just arcade art. So all the side panels of the arcade around the, the, uh, the screen itself. I've always loved that arcade art. Uh, so we were talking about possibly doing a show with that because he was doing stuff with Midway at the time. Um, and, I came down to do a show with you, Alan, the Dallas Comic-Con, and one of the guys from Big Time Collectibles was there, and uh, kind of half, I, I didn't take it real seriously at the time, but he's like, yeah, we let me pitch an idea to you about possibly doing another cover with the Taco Time. I'm like, how am I going to top Taco Time? I mean, it's so basic, and... There's really the, nothing the, to uh, it. Deadpool 27 Taco Time? Is that yes. That one? Yes. Uh, I'm like, how am I going to top that? And then I've, I put two and two together and said, oh, if I did the actual arcade art around the screen and kind of update the graphics a little bit with the 8-bit stuff, I think that would be a really cool concept. So I pitched that to BTC uh, they absolutely loved the idea, and then we sent it over to Marvel, and they loved the concept too. 27 revisions later, the cover came out. Super. So I know you can't talk to all because you've got a ton of things in the works. We go over this all the time. Yeah. Um, but can you tell me a little bit about the ones that have just recently come out? Obviously, you've got the... Uh, Taco Time 2 for Deadpool, which is was just released a couple months ago. Yep. What else? Uh, Spider-Boy number one just came out. Um, I love that cover because it's Squirrel Girl, and Squirrel Girl is one of my favorite characters ever. Um, and let's see. World Tree number six 
with the comics corner just dropped, mm -hmm. which I did a really old arcade game with that, uh, not arcade game, NES game, actually a Commodore 64 game uh, called Shadow Gate, which if anybody gets that reference, uh, it's time to get your prostate examined. Uh, <laughs> So that that turned out great. Uh, Big time collectibles just dropped Spider Boy number two, which was a uh, I did a concept as a platformer, and I got to add Santa Claus and Taskmaster, which was a really cool concept because I could draw Santa, and as Mark Brooks <laughs> says, I look like a very young Santa Claus. <laughs> uh, what oh, else yeah, those are about? quite a few coming out right now. And then you've got even more in the works that are super secret. Yeah. So um, after the first of the year, we're going to have a major drop on a lot of covers. Cool. So you've been working with a lot of exclusive covers and that's kind of unique to the business. Um, you know, so why don't you kind of talk a little bit about the process of actually going through an exclusive, especially a store exclusive, because that's, that's kind of unique. Yeah. So the process goes that the store wants to do an exclusive cover with a certain book. Uh, they reach out to one of the companies and say, Hey, I want this artist on this cover. And I wind up doing between two and four sketches on the concept of the cover. Uh, the company goes back and forth. Well, I mean, Marvel and DC go back and forth with the company. Uh, and boom. But stuff like image, I work directly with the customer uh, to come up with the concepts and everything and basically turn in the finished artwork and say, this is what we want. Uh, so we choose between the two and four initial sketches. Um, and then I just work on it, send it in. They go through revisions and, you know, go back and forth until the final, final product is done so i you know a lot of lawyers going in because i'm doing retro gaming so they want to make sure that i'm not directly offending a copyright of anything and so there's a lot of back and forth back and forth on it and then once it's done it's done cool now you did uh one for us for our sword of freya stealing thunder we had a little bit of fun with it you and i kind of collabed back and forth with uh it was a Castlevania II homage that uh, I thought came out pretty well. I thought you did a really good job keeping that vibe without making it just exact copy kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah, that's – and, man, so, did I spend so many hours on that game. So it was like <laughs> – looking at that cover again, it's just like, oh, man, I've that that last final boss is always a pain in the butt. But it was, it was a fun concept to do, and uh, – going back and forth and trying new techniques on that one to make sure everything pops and trying to get that painted look was really cool. Cool. So now you've got some, several covers just released. Um, are you going out promoting them anywhere? Or are you doing any shows? What's, what do you have going on? Uh, this weekend coming up, I have LA comic con, uh, first time on the West coast in eight years, first time in LA in over 30. So I'm looking forward to that show and seeing how that is. Um, I'll be in the booth with uh, Comics Cave. Uh, I don't have the booth information. I'm, I'll toss that up on my socials once I get it. Um, really looking forward to that show. Um, we'll have the Spider Boy, Taco Time, and Amazing Spider-Man 35 variants with me. Um and if anybody really, really, really wants it, I have my new little face pins. <laughs> Those are cute. <laughs> At the booth. And yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it. This is my first major show since 2018. So well, there you go. Cool. All right. Um, we're just about out of time here. We're running up on 10 minutes. Do you have anything else you want to share out today or? No, no. Uh, like I said, keep an eye out on my socials. I'll be releasing with the upcoming covers on my socials, uh, Big Time Collectibles, Comic Exposure, uh, The Comics Cave, all those guys. I have all their links up on my socials. Uh, 
when the covers come out and looking forward to seeing what you guys think of them when they get released. Cool. Well, thanks for the time today, Matt. I do appreciate it. Appreciate it too.